All right, hello everyone. This is Mary O'Brien. I'm the State Bicycle Pedestrian Coordinator here in the Roadway Design Office and Central Office. And today I'm going to be talking about pedestrian refuge islands. So first of all, I'm going to go over basically what they are. Essentially, it's a way to divide a more complex crossing up into simpler crossings. So this is an example of a, a median or divisional island, um, so two different ways of traffic that traffic is going that somebody is able to stop in the middle. They only have to look for traffic one way before they have a place to break and then do the second leg of the crossing. Um, they do work best if they're done in conjunction with other treatments, just like any of these. They are more powerful when used together. So this is a great example of showing the special emphasis crosswalk markings, the warning signs, appropriate lighting, and the curb extensions. Here are some examples in the field. On the upper left, you see some pedestrians that don't have a pedestrian refuge island available to them, and they're essentially creating their own, finding a spot to wait in the middle, which, as you can see, with that car very close to them, that's not an ideal situation. So if we know that there's a need for something like this, we want to go ahead and provide it. And then in the other two photos, it shows, um, again, that combination of the uh, pedestrian refuge island being used in conjunction with some other elements. So one in the upper right, it shows the RRFBs, and then towards the bottom, we see um, the signage that Alan was talking about earlier. This goes into some more detail about what we're looking for for these pedestrian refuge islands. It's ideal if they are at grade. That's going to help um, any of our ADA users. So people in wheelchairs or low to no vision, that's going to be helpful. Um, in, a, in addition to that, we want it to be at least six feet wide so it can allot for space for the truncated domes as well as a flat waiting area in the center um, so that if someone is in, on, in a wheelchair, they're able to stay level there. And although we're talking about ADA here, these, these uh, facilities really help everyone. Um, especially slower seniors, young families, and then the ADA folks as well. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about this here in Florida and what we have in the FDM as well as some other resources. So we have resources in FDM 212 um, intersections chapter, the 213 chapter on modern roundabouts, and then also a couple of standard plans and a developmental standard plan that go into more detail. Here is an example from one of our standard plans. This is index 522-002, and this talks about that depressed sidewalk being at grade. Here's some other information as well. And then in the FDM, we have some examples of more of the pork chop, as they're sometimes called, corner um, refuge islands. And those are for turning movements mainly. And here's some more information about this and this is in the um, standard plans. And then lastly, we have some information in the modern roundabouts chapter, and this is showing how pedestrians would cross the different legs of the roundabout and have a waiting area there. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about having staggered or um, slanted refuge islands, and what this is doing is it's kind of engineering the pedestrian to face oncoming traffic in the hopes that they would be looking for that traffic and, um, and checking before they cross the second leg. So this example is in Phoenix, Arizona, not in Florida, and it is showing the staggered crossing used in conjunction with some fencing. And we actually have a developmental um, standard that goes over some fencing that we recommend here in Florida. And with that, we're going to move on to the rectangular rapid flashing beacons.